Well, I was in a great mood, and then I just ran into Johnny Rhodes right there, and it gave me nightmares of uh, having to play against him back in the day when he pointed that press uh, with Coach Williams. But um, needless to say, uh, this was a enormous win for us. Um, obviously, a lot of adversity coming in, you know, not having Ty, but we haven't had Ty, but not having Ryan tonight, um, you know, another guy, you know, Ty and Ryan, what, 13 each a game, that's 26 points a night, and you know, the shooting and the, the thing, they're really good players, but, you know, it's just a testament to the guys sitting here and everybody in our locker room that, you know, there there's a there's a competitive spirit that our guys have that they weren't just going to come here. Now, if we lost, we lost, but we weren't going to just show up and take our loss and go home. You know, we came to compete. Um, we're still playing for a lot this year. Our guys know that. This is the time of the year where you need to be playing your best and, even though it wasn't the prettiest uh, at times, um, you know, we were able to make a lot of plays. These guys were awesome. I mean, Nick, 27 points. I mean, you know now with, without Ty and Ryan out there, there's going to be an even added attention on Boo. And that's where th the way to ease that up is for other guys to step up. You know, for Nick to get 27 tonight, I thought his 10 free throws in the first half or eight free throws, whatever he had in the first half, were huge. Um, in terms of just getting us some scoring. We were struggling to score. And then what do you want to say about this guy, Blake? I mean, he came into the year and, you know, the plan was to redshirt him. And the reason we were going to redshirt him was because we saw something in him that he could be good, you know, if he got stronger, if he committed himself to the game and improved. And then all of a sudden, Ty goes down and, and he and I get together. And I said, hey, man, it's on you, but, you know, we, we could use you because the way he'd been practicing and what he brings to our team. And he said, Coach, I'm ready. I, I want to get out there. And, you know, for him to come in and have his first start tonight and not only have a start, but to, you know, task him with, with trying to chase Jameer around, um, who's one of the best guards in the country. And then his ability to, to make – I thought his three-point play was huge when it was 44-42. He made some great passes, made free throws, just tremendous performance uh, by these two guys. So – uh, really big, big win for us, and and obviously got to go home and and try to find a way to to get another one on Saturday. Yeah, well, many of you saw. I mean, he rolled his ankle in the Michigan game, right? He he sprained it in the Michigan game. He came back, he gutted it out, came back and played great. Once he got through the game, though, you know, it it, um, it took a turn for the worse kind of the next day. And we've been he's been working around the clock. I mean, he wanted so badly to play, you know, tonight. He just wasn't quite ready. It wasn't the right thing to do. He wasn't moving well. Um, we felt like a couple more days. And, um, you know, we're hopeful for Saturday. We'll see how it goes. It's kind of it, – it truly is day-to-day. -day. You know, when you sprain an ankle, so much of it is kind of just how the swelling, how you're moving – all those kind of things, and we're we're not going to put him out there if we we don't think he can he can move around at a high clip and and really help us. So we'll it's just a day by day thing as we head into Saturday. And then for you and Blake, when did you know that he was going to be starting in place of Ryan, and what was that conversation like? Yeah, well, I mean, Blake's been playing, and um, you know, we we kind of knew yesterday. Um, you know, we, Ryan had been getting a lot of treatment. And, you know, we wanted to have him tested out a little bit yesterday, and it became very apparent that he just wasn't ready. And so, you know, at that point, you know, I made the decision to go with Blake um, for a number of reasons. First, I think he earns it. But secondly, I, I, I thought taking a little bit of the pressure off Boo to have to guard Jameer Young for fouls, but also for endurance. I mean, Jameer's moving around. He's in all those pick and rolls. And I really wanted Blake to, to try to – use his length and to do the best job he could. I mean, Jim Miller still had a great game. He still got 24 and had six. But, you know, I thought his defense to start the game was what we needed uh, against uh, Maryland. Well, I was really nervous about us being able to score. You know, I, I knew we were going to compete hard. Um, you know, I knew we were going to have to defend them well because, I mean, if any team takes 26 points a game out of the lineup, you know, that's going to – it's going to be different, you know, in terms of, you know, we only – we've been one of the best three-point shooting teams in the country. We only made two threes tonight. But for us to get to the line 31 times, um, you know, for these guys, the efficiency that we had from two. Um, Maryland makes it hard for you to run a lot of plays. 
you know, they do their 2-2-1 two, two, press. They come back. They show zone. They switch to man. They kind of just make you play basketball, you know. So really a lot what we were trying to do is get Boo favorable matchups, maybe where we thought he could create and draw attention and maybe find other guys. And, um, you know, and then just play off of those openings as they were doing it. And, you know, these guys did a great job. I mean, Nick was the main beneficiary of that. And he's such a good cutter. I mean, that's what he is. He's crafty. Um, he's he, he gets in the open areas. He makes floaters. And, you know, he's kind of amazed that I'm saying this because we went to rival high schools. And back home, I went to Glenbrook North. He went to Glenbrook South. And those two teams played last night in the state tournament. And Glenbrook North won. So I, I told him I was going to say that in the press conference. But, um, but I love this guy. He's a competitor, man. That's why I wanted him with us. Uh, he, 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 at times, it looks a little different the way he gets things done. But all he does is win, and, and all he does is compete. And I'll take a guy like that on my team any day. I didn't, but, but you know, we talk about the next man up mentality, and I know um, no one can replace what Ty and Ryan do, especially offensively and what they can do shooting the ball, but I knew I had to just come in and play as hard as I can, try to do the little stuff to help us win. Um, I don't know, like, personally, I didn't have a certain play where I was like, Dang, I'm gonna score a lot of points, but <laughs> I know for our team, like the biggest play for us was when Blake Smith got the offensive rebound in the hand one. Just the energy that we had just elevated so much. So, Any more questions? Yeah. Coach, I know how much you love to compare current teams and past yeah. teams, but have you ever had a team that you were able to face adversity? <laughs> yeah, probably not. Um, especially when you're living in the moment, and that's obviously no. I. I've loved every team. Uh, to me, like every team is its own journey. You know, you start in the summer and you go through your journey and good and bad and those relationships and all that. But it's just been an absolute joy with this team because start, when we got together in the summer, you could just sense, first of all, how close they are. Um, it's it's probably as close-knit a team as I've ever had, top to bottom, one through, you know, 15, 14, 15 guys on the roster, managers, like – Everybody hangs out. There's just such a good vibe, and it carries out to the way they play. And there's such a competitive spirit. And even games like tonight, like I think we're starting to get to a point where our program, when you're on the road and the other team making a run, and I think they cut it to four, and the crowd's starting to get into it a little bit, and they're pressing. Like I never felt like our guys felt like they weren't going to win. You know, and I've talked about that a lot. We're trying to build a program. We're, we're certainly not nowhere near the level of tradition of Maryland and what they've done. And and all those things, but we're trying to build something at Northwestern. And, you know, when you build a winning culture, when you're in games like this, you believe you're supposed to win. And and I sense that tonight, no matter who was on the floor. So, uh, Coach, you mentioned the ending. It's from 11, then it's 3, then it's, you know, 5, whatever, in the final 30 seconds. Walk us through what you saw from those final minutes. Yeah, well, Nick took a couple questionable three-point shots um, during that stretch that led to some fast breaks, but it was all good. But, uh, right? Appreciate it, Coach. Yeah. <laughs> um, but, I mean, look, Maryland, everyone's fighting this time of year, right? I mean, everyone that you play in the Big Ten is fighting to try to, to try to keep playing. You got proud guys over there. You got older guys, Dante Scott, Jameer Young. Those guys are, are seniors, man. Like, the, you knew they're, they're going to go down fighting. And so they got out in transition a couple times. I thought off some misses, we weren't able to set our defense. They got in transition. We took care of the ball, which was good, but we had some empty possessions offensively. Then it got down to three or four or whatever it was. And, you know, I think Brooke got fouled on a drive to the middle, which was a, which was a big play. Walked up, made two free throws. Nick was able to get a floater. Um, and then we didn't turn the ball over against their press, which was huge. And we didn't give up any threes. So even though it, they got a couple, you know, they got a couple late ups there at the end. We felt like if we could take care of the ball in the last minute and not give up threes and, and make our free throws, we were going to be in a good position. Yeah, Nick. Yeah. Yeah, I did. I thought it was a big stretch. Um, you know, they were they had got it back there to two. They were trying to make a push. They had a little bit of momentum, and then, 
you know, I thought these two guys made some huge plays. Like, like you said, Brooks got to the line. We kind of got that separation back to seven. And then I think we kind of pushed it to 11 there. Blake got a couple free throws to get it to 11. And, um, you know, then we just had to kind of hang on, right? You know, you knew, I mean, Jameer is really hard to play against, guys. He's so shifty, he's so fast. He's got such a knack for getting fouled. Um, and we were just fortunate. You know, we played the percentages a little bit with the shooting. And, you know, you, you get a little bit fortunate. I mean, Dante Scott is a terrific shooter, you know, and he goes 0 for 4. And, you know, the other guy's 2, two, two for 22. I mean, we had to, we had to play – that game a little bit with what we were faced. And fortunately for us, you know, that they missed some shots tonight. Coach, uh, your job is obviously to worry about your team, but are you surprised Maryland has struggled uh, this year? Well, it's hard. I mean, I, I think they're a good team. I mean, I, I look back to, I mean, I have so much respect for Kevin. He and I have known each other for a long time. You know, we have similar upbringings. We're sons of coaches, you know, so we've always kind of bonded over that, you know, growing up in gyms with our dads, you know, we've always had a good relationship along the way and I've always rooted for him. I think he's a terrific coach and I, I like their, their pieces. Obviously they got some young guys and, you know, they haven't shot the ball well at times, you know, which is, um, you know, a, a little bit uncharacteristic, but um, listen, man, when, when you play against these guys and you're watching them on film, like you you know, you're going to be in for a fight. I mean, we, our game last month at our place, I mean, we needed Boo to score on the last shot and we needed Jameer to miss one. And, you know, fortunately tonight, you know, things went our way. But, um, you know, there's no question in my mind, Maryland is, is going to be where <laughs> in a great place. It's a proud program. Obviously, you guys know I've competed against Maryland for many, many years with my Duke background. And I know what this program represents. And I know Kevin is going to get them to a great place. Last question. Yeah, I mean, I'm not a metrics guy. I mean, someone told me it was a quad one win, you know, so to get another road win, um, I guess quad one, whatever that means, um, you know, and, and I think we have a good, I mean, I think I think we're a good team. I mean, what, whatever that means, we're, we're still pushing. Like, we got three games left, so we're, we're not even talking about tournament. I mean, but if you ask me, you know, does our body of work, you know, represent a team that, that should have a chance to compete there? I, I would say yes, but obviously I'm biased. But, um we just got to keep focusing on the present, present, going to the next thing, you know, to have 11 league wins, you know, to to have 20 wins. Those are those are great milestones, you know, for our program and for these guys, and and hopefully we can add to that in these next couple of weeks. All right, All right. thank you guys. Appreciate you guys. Thanks.